According to the winter finch forecast, we shouldn't expect to see too many winter finches at our bird feeders here in the Driftless region uh, this winter. Uh, I guess there's a very good uh, kind of spruce cone crop up in Canada and also lots of birch and alder seeds. So there's not much reason for uh, many of the, the winter finches to move south this year. Uh, that said, uh, the purple finches might be a bright spot. There were a lot of spruce budworms outbreaks up in Canada this year, which is uh, one of the main food sources for uh, baby purple finches. So I guess they had a, a great uh, breeding year. And uh, we might see uh, more purple finches like uh, this colorful guy here uh, showing up uh, as they just kind of move south uh, and uh, kind of check things out uh, this winter. But uh, red poles and uh, crossbills, pine siskins, uh, things like that are probably going to be pretty lean, and I guess uh, probably red-breasted nuthatches might be staying north this winter too. So uh, might have to be satisfied with a, mostly our local birds this winter season. But now's the time to get your bird feeders out and uh, get them filled up because the cold weather's coming. Smallmouth bass are really fun to catch since uh, they're such great fighters. And uh, they get quite big, but uh, they really like to jump uh, when you hook one. You can find smallmouth bass in uh, some of our uh, rivers that have a uh, good rock bottom, like the Upper Iowa River, the Turkey River, uh, up in Minnesota, the Root River would be, and of course the Mississippi River has some uh, huge smallmouth bass in it too. And uh, things like a uh, floating rapala uh, work great for artificial bait or sometimes uh, uh, maybe a, uh, a, a rebel crayfish, another good bait for smallmouth bass. Now in the late season, uh, they kind of slow their metabolism down and uh, just working a, a little uh, 16 ounce jig uh, with a like a half a night crawler through some of the deeper holes. Uh, you might hook up with a smallmouth bass. Uh, now's the time to get them. Once we move into November, they kind of shut down and go dormant until next spring. So. Uh, good luck if uh, you can find a, a few smallmouth bass yet this fall. Now at the end of October, American Bittersweet is all dressed up for the coming Halloween season. You can see these uh, bright little orange berries here look just like pretty little pumpkins. And uh, American Bittersweet, by the way, if you're not familiar with this plant, it uh, grows as a vine. You'll find it along woodland edges, uh, also sometimes brushy fence rows. It's a good uh, place to find American bittersweet. It may actually get even a little bit prettier than this uh, as we move into early November when those uh, little uh, kind of orange shells there will break open. They're kind of hard and there's a, a fleshy darker orange fruit inside. So you get that two-tone orange color then, but uh, a lot of people like to to uh, take a Sunday drive and have a little nippers along and clip off some of these uh, American bittersweet vines and uh, twist them into a holiday wreath. So uh, that might be something that uh, uh, you could do here in the next weekend or two. But uh, be on the lookout for American bittersweet. It's uh, not hard to see as you're driving by. <laughs> 